Hey guys, welcome back to Vince Bell Custom. So today I'm sharing with you a Linda Carter Wonder Woman garage kit that I just painted up for someone. Now this is a 3D print. I don't know who printed it. I think the guy that I did this for, he bought it off of a site, if I remember correctly, because I don't think any of the people I know printed it for him. Um, at least I think so, I'm not really sure. But it was a hollow kit, and we had to kind of fill it up with uh, resins to make it solid. And we did some custom work with the hair. I'll show you the other head in a second. Um, and then we also did some custom work with the lasso because it was like a, uh, a sculpted in lasso that you kind of click into the leg. Uh, he didn't really want that, so what I did is I filled that out, took it out, and we added a lasso that I use for like a lot of my other uh, projects. And I made a little like clasp for it and all that. And then we did a nice custom base for her too. This isn't the base that came with her. Because uh, the base that came with her was really large and he wanted it to scale down and make it more simple. He's more into the museum type stuff, which I don't blame him. And uh, this is kind of what we came up with. Now, the kit alone is not bad. It's a really good kit. And uh, it was a little bit uh, tricky in a few things where the way the hands kind of connect and the way the head connected too. But we got that worked out. Um, it's a pretty straightforward 3D kit. Uh, it's not bad. Um, I can't really say anything bad about it. I mean, it's a really good sculpt. It does look like her. And, of course, the hair is uh, sculpted different. Uh, so this is the head. He got two of these heads because uh, at first, one of the heads were printed pretty bad. So you can kind of see this is like the original hair to her. Uh, what happened was, I think I think it was this head that he used uh, when he got it. It was all like uh, bubbled and it wasn't misaligned. And there was a bunch of issues with it. So he got a second head printed out. So like I said, uh, he wanted to go more of like that, um, I guess that 70s kind of like flared hair type look on it. He didn't really like, want the hair on this. Kind of more like stylized. So what I did is I had to uh, take the head. I chopped out all the hair and I tried to make her a bald head. And I lined it up with the neck on there and I kind of reworked the neck because... Uh, one of the things I don't like um, is when, uh, you know, people cut their items on the bare body because it's very hard to, like, seam that stuff up. I kind of wish that they would have um, made the cut of, like, around the chest, you know, up here with the chest here. Uh, and then maybe cut it off at the, you know, bracelets. So you print this part up here. Um, and then this part would connect. I, I think something like that would have been better. Uh, but... A lot of these 3D items and these like Patreon sculpts, uh, I think a lot of these sculptors just got to get used to cutting stuff. You know, just cutting something here on the shoulders is a real nightmare, you know. Because when you cut it from the shoulders and then you go to print it, sometimes that stuff doesn't line up. So you got to kind of rebuild that whole muscle and shoulder area, which is kind of a pain. But I pretty much got it worked out and uh, it came out pretty good. Um, right here, uh, what it was is... It's kind of hard to explain. I guess if you see it in the pre uh, video of all uh, some of the sculpts, what it was is they had like a whole sculpted area around here with the leg and stuff where the lasso connects into, which was kind of weird. I don't like embedding things into the body um, because when you, because I, I guess not only did the, the piece break, I think the guy said he got it, it also just didn't line up correctly. It should have been something that would be like, you know, clipped on the outside and lays on her, not like embedded into the skin. I don't know. Like this hand here, the problem with this one and this one, it's like they embedded it where they cut the hand out and it embeds into the uh, resin, which is weird because it kind of doesn't sink in correctly. It should be on the outside. I just, it, you'd have to see it in person when you put it together, but it, I got it to work. What I did is... This hand was a little bit harder. I did fill in some of the other gaps, but with the knuckle ones and like the fist, I was able to kind of fill it in a little bit more. But if you look at it and you were actually to see it, you could see that the fist kind of sinks into the resin where it should be like on the outside of the resin. It kind of sinks into a little bit and you lose some of the knuckles. It's a little bit weird, but it, it, we got it to work. And then plus with the lasso in front of it, you kind of hide it so you're okay with that, you know. But all in all, it was pretty good. Uh, he also asked me to do a little bit of the custom work here because I guess it wasn't lined up correctly to like what the movie was. So I did a little custom work as there as well. Um, one of the downsides, and sadly this is like one of these things I always tell people, before I start doing custom work, let me know everything. But this was something that was like an afterthought. 
what it was is these boots were actually filled in solid. I'm not sure why they were solid. I don't know if it was because of the way they clicked into the original base or that's the way they sculpted it. Um, so he wanted to have heels, but the problem was is after I started working on her, I already added a rod up the leg and I poured in my resin to make her solid. So this rod goes all the way up to about her hip. But if I'd known that he wanted to, you know, have these heels, I would have bent the rod to come into the front of the foot to hold her, but it was too late. So there is a little bit of rod underneath here, but after we paint up the base, I painted gray, it's kind of hidden. Um, that's just one of those things. It's like, that's why I always tell people, before we go to uh, do any heavy customizing, before we do any uh, putting the kit together, before we do any paint work, let's hash out all the details first, because trying to take steps back is always a nightmare so that's why i always tell people let's hash everything out but it's really not that bad it's sort of there but if we were going to do like a white base or a brighter base it would stick out but since he wanted to do more of like a cracked up a rocky uh granite type of a base i was able to hide it pretty well um so i think this base comes from a different wonder woman statue i forget which one it is um so I think what happened was this base was actually cut in two pieces, which is kind of a bad idea when you do a circle. If you guys are ever doing like, a, you know, Patreon sculpts or you're doing a sculpt and you're going to sell the STL file, I suggest not cutting around base because I think what happened is it was cut and then uh, he had to had somebody print it out. But what happens is it was really cut to the point where it was down the middle like here. And when you put the two pieces together, they don't line up correctly and if I was to put it together it would just look uh, horrible so he had somebody actually piece this together or the original sculptor pieced it together for him I forgot who um, and made it one solid piece and it was printed out and it worked out great um, so that's another thing too is if you're going to do a round base uh, or something design it in a way where it can be cut in two pieces than just like a perfectly round so like guys 3d printing is still not perfect to the point where if this is cut you can't merge these two together and have a nice perfectly even thing it's just sometimes your prints sort of warp a bit sometimes they sort of like sag and it's very hard to do it so that's another uh, thing that we kind of ran into but this is all like learning curve stuff uh this is all the type of stuff that you know as uh time goes on with 3d printing and uh you know customizing and stuff we're gonna you know we'll kind of be ready for it like if somebody says hey i want to make this item but i want you to customize it. i'm like well how is the file cut how is everything pieced together let me know because we might run into issues so that's kind of what happened um but i did re-sculpt the hair as you can kind of see uh it was a little bit tricky you know basically what i had to do is I had to sort of cut around all this and kind of create that, but the ears are sort of sucked, sunk into the hair. So I couldn't actually sculpt the hair around the ears like maybe we would have wanted because she does have earrings, but I didn't put those earrings in there because I would have never got them in there. Uh, but the face sculpt is great. I mean, it looks like Linda Carter and they did a great job with the face sculpt. Um, so I just had some fun with the hair, you know, just kind of gave it that like, you know, feathered look. Um, I forgot the actress he sent me to. Um, uh, damn, it was a, that 70s, 60s uh, look type thing. Um, or early 80s, I forget. But anyway, um, it came out pretty good. Uh, as far as the skin tone, uh, tried up some new paints, you know, because like I said, Garage Kits is long gone. So I'm using a lot of other different paints. Um, I used a... Uh, I decals on her, which is the Archer transfer decals, but I used the really light blue ones, but I went back in there with paint and I sort of like repainted them a bit just to kind of give it more of her eyes from like, you know, the show and everything. So that's kind of what I did with that. Lips, nice softer lips. I didn't go crazy with the lipstick. I, I'm not a super realistic painter, um, you know, so I can't really get the face to look like her from the actual actress, but you know, I kind of did more of the comic book look how I paint. I think it worked out pretty well. Um, and then down for the outfit, one thing I was kind of confused at is I looked at some of her outfit and she has gold bracelets, but then she has silver bracelets. And he said that in one season she had the gold ones and stuff. So we did the gold and everything. So her headgear and her bracelets are, uh, uh the Alclad pale gold, but this is a uh, outfit here is more of Alclad pale gold, but I missed it some, uh, pearlized yellowish gold onto it to give it a different look just to kind of separate it because i always felt like her outfit was more of like um like fabric gold type stuff it wasn't like metal gold so and then pearlized blue for the outfit i did the 
lasso. Uh, I add a little bit of a clasp in here. So this is like a piece of metal that is sort of, it's, it's a piece of metal that I grind it down and I bent it into a loop and then I glued it in there. But then after that, I sculpted the little button piece on it to make it look like that. So it's not going to go anywhere. So if you were to pull this, you probably would pull her all the way. It won't break off. So that's a nice solid piece of metal. It just was a little bit tricky to get all this rope in there. Um, then you got your nice booty shot. So I had to rework um, something over here. When I started painting her, I think it was over here or it was over here. There was, uh, I didn't see it when I primed it, and this is something I gotta get used to with 3D printing. 3D printing is not always gonna be the same with every printer in person. Sometimes uh, some printers are gonna have some like, you know, skips, and then you're gonna have to fix, fix those skips. Other printers might be super clean. Some printers might, or people might add a ton of supports on there, so you have to sand all those supports down. So there was something over here when I started painting the skin, you could see it was like a really hard arch or something, and I never saw it with the primer. So as I did all the skin, I had to go back in there, sand it down, and do some putty work, and then I had to retouch it all up. So that's another thing I got to keep in mind now with some of these 3D prints. Um, if it's something you buy off of like uh, Etsy or uh, eBay, these people might be using some really crappy old printers, and there might be a lot of issues, or they might have failed, or something might have skipped. I don't know. So... That's pretty much with that. As far as the boots and everything, you know, just kind of like a red leather boots. I kept on thinking that her, the bottom of her boots were white, but I'm thinking of uh, the comic books because in the show, it's this white zipper here is uh, the white. It wasn't the bottom of the heels. So that was something I was kind of like, I had to keep going back to the show and figuring it out. But all in all, really good statue. Uh, a little bit tricky. Good learning curve though for me. I'm glad uh, to start doing more 3D print paint ups. Uh, this way I know like what to expect. And also, uh, also to hash out details in the beginning, I guess you could say. But all in all, really great sculpt. Had a lot of fun with it. Uh, it looks really good for you know a, uh, a SDL file of Linda Carter. Um, he wanted it, of course, the one four scale, and pretty simple, you know. So it's opening up a lot of doors out there for the hobby. There's a lot of new stuff, you know coming in and out, uh, really uh, cool projects people are working on. There's also a lot of items out there that I'm even seeing from my own personal collection that I could get and customize and make personal grails. So it's, uh, the hobby's changing, but it's changing for the better, I think. There's a lot of more options and people can make like some really crazy one of a kinds with all swapping STL files and heads and bases and weapons and all kinds of stuff. So it's like the possibilities are limitless as far as you want to take it. So let me know what you guys think. Do you like her? Do you like this file? Have you seen this before? Do you guys know who produced it? Maybe you could guys leave that in the description for me. But all in all, really good uh, sculpt. Had a lot of fun with it. Let me know what you guys think. And thanks for watching.